Question 1.1.4. Interesting question. Five marks. Folks, let's read through it. It says, on the left-hand side, it is an equation because it's an equal sign, so we're still solving equations here. 1.1.4 says, the square root of x plus 18 is equal to x minus 2. Now, folks, we're supposed to solve for x here. You're very important. I've got quite a few tips for you here. And the big tip is you need to do restrictions. Okay? There's a root there, first of all. And there's an unknown in the root. So you can say a root and an unknown. And... On the right-hand side, there is an x. Now, let's analyze this. If it says the root of x plus 18, folks, there's two things happening here. I'm putting this in the sketchboard so that you remember it. There's a plus, an invisible plus, in front of that root. So, whatever is on the other side here, has to be positive. We cannot have a positive equal to a negative. So that's going to be part of my restrictions. The second thing, underneath the square root, we also have to have a positive because we cannot find the root of, let's say, negative 3. That is what we call non-real or complex or imaginary okay when you go to university one day you will learn all about those numbers but at school you must make sure that if there's a root you have what's under that root must be positive okay so let's start and let's start with our restrictions our restrictions as we said on the right-hand side, because there's an invisible plus in front of this root, this side has to be positive, which means it must be bigger than naught. Okay, so we say x minus 2, whatever happens here. Well, it can be naught as well, so we can say it's bigger or equal to naught. So on the right-hand side, x minus 2 must be bigger or equal to naught. That means that x has to be bigger and equal to 2. But we're not finished yet. We have something underneath the square root. And that something is x plus 18. It can be naught, but it has to be positive. So that in itself also has to be bigger and equal to 0. Okay, that would mean that x is bigger and equal to, we take the 18 over the inequality, and it becomes minus 18. Now remember, we don't have to change the inequality because we're not multiplying with a negative. It will only change if I multiplied by something. Okay, we're not finished. We're almost finished with this. We go to a number line. Here's minus 18, and there is 2. Well, the one restriction says big and equal to 2, so it goes to the right of 2. The second restriction says bigger or equal to minus 18, so it goes to the right of minus 18. And look here, they start overlapping there. So big thing now is we now have our primary restriction. So important, I'm putting this on the sketchboard for you is to put down the primary restriction. And in this case, it is where the overlap is. So whatever happens here, our answer has to be bigger than 2. Now we're going to start and we're going to solve for x. Okay, it's a square root. How do I get rid of the square root? Well, I take the x plus 18 in the root... I square it. What I do to the one side of an equation, I have to do to the other side as well. So I square both sides. 
OK. If I square the left-hand side, it simply just means the root disappears. Now be careful. If you square a binomial, it becomes a trinomial. So that's a nice tip to remember. Squaring a binomial becomes a trinomial. Okay, folks, let's see what that means. That means it's the first term squared. There's a middle term of 2 times x times minus 2. So that gives me minus 4x plus 4. Then I'm back at a quadratic. So everything you learned about the quadratic kicks in here. I need it in standard form. So I'm going to keep x squared minus 4x plus 4 on the one side. I'm going to take the x over. It's going to become a minus x. And I'm taking the 18 over. It becomes minus 18 is naught. Clean it up a bit so that we can factorize. So we get x squared minus 5x minus 14 is equal to naught. Now, folks, that we can factorize quite easily. We have two brackets. It's a quadratic. So we have x and an x. The factors of 14 here that will give us 5 is minus 7 times a positive 2 will give us the negative 5. So now we can solve x is equal to minus 2 or the x is equal to 7. Now the big thing. We have a restriction. We saw that our restriction told us that x must be bigger and equal to 2. So the minus 2, even though it is a solution to this quadratic equation of ours, we're going to exclude that answer and then say that x is equal to 7 only because that satisfies the restriction. So let's add that to our list of tips. Always check your answer. Write that big when you study in big letters and highlight it. If there's a square root, you have to check your answer. This is a five mark question. Should not take you more than five minutes to do.